Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Hot Issues. I am Stephen Enti. Last month, December 2019, climaxed a series of activities uh, by government initiative dubbed the Year of Return, which is supposed to be like a heritage journey for uh, people of African descent in the diaspora, especially in the United States of America and the Caribbean, to return to what was branded as the homeland. While the gains have been uh, loudly spelt out uh, by government, there have been suggestions that some of the claims and counterclaims have been embellished. Today I have with me uh, someone who understands tourism. He was actually the chief executive officer one time of the Ghana Tourist Development Authority, a former member of parliament for Ablekuma South, uh, Fris Bafu. Uh, welcome, sir, and thank, thank you, you very much. much for coming. The year of return, I mean, I come from the perspective that anything which encourages people uh, of African descent to reconnect to their roots and their origins is a good one. But do you get the sense that we did this in the best way way we can as a country? Not really, but I must uh, commend the government for the initiative. Mm -hmm. I think that um, we did not prepare thoroughly for the year of return um, because there are a lot of things going wrong in the country that I think we have to remedy. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, for example, you're getting people to come down from um, Europe, America, and the Caribbeans, the Americas, not only North America, mm -hmm. because um, the largest population of Africans in the diaspora are in Brazil. Yeah. Okay, so you're asking them to come down and come back and, and reconnect. It is not a new thing, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, what we should have done was to prepare our people um, right down to what from kinds of preparations oh, well, would there, have been there, adequate? There should have been a lot of propaganda, a lot of, uh, there should have been a sensitization campaign. A conscious effort a very to conscious rally effort. all the citizens That's right. along. And you know, when uh, you're inviting visitors to your country, you expect everybody to be on their best behavior. Mm. Um, we still have the problems with the, the traffic, people going on one way, motorcyclists yeah. doing all they, mm. they can, the presence of police in the cities is minimal. We still have people throwing rubbish, rubbish out of yeah, moving I mean, vehicles. Vehicles and our gutters are overflowing with filth. So these things should have been addressed and we should have used it as, an, mm. as, a, as a way of also improving our lot. Mm. All right. If you give, let me give you an example. Uh, London, uh, the, the, when the London had the Olympics, uh, they brought Seb Cole to come in and he organized and London was well prepared for everybody coming down. Let's say we want a million people to come down to uh, Ghana. Uh, we, have we got a database of the hotels? Have we sensitized the hotels? Have we helped them upgrade and all that kind of stuff? But the initiative... Do we know who is coming, where they're coming from, from yeah, etc. You see, uh, the, thing is, uh, the thing is, it's not a new thing and that's where I wanted to go. All right. Um, in 1957, after independence, Ghana was the mecca for most of the um, uh, African intellectuals in the diaspora. Uh, Maya Angelou came here. Langston Hughes came here. Um, we had quite a few people coming in. Malcolm X, Muhammad At the Ali. peak of the civil rights yeah, movement. movement. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was one of the places that gave them the impetus mm -hmm. that, you know, you, Africans can actually do what they, they can. And then we also had Panafest, which was supposed to be one of the greatest festivals. I mean, Nigeria had a uh, Pan-African festival, so did Senegal and Dakar and all that kind of thing. And when I remember when Panafest was coming, we, we really did a lot of work in, in, in cleaning up and sensitizing the people. It was in Cape Coast, so yeah. it was limited. Then we had Emancipation Day, yeah. all right, which was also instituted to bring people back. Mm. And it was on one of the um, Emancipation Day launching that uh, the then president, Jerry Rawlings, announced that uh, the children of the diaspora could get uh, a second uh, uh, citizenship, dual citizenship in Ghana. Then uh, after that, we, we had uh, the Joseph Project, which was initiated by the late Jacob Bechib Lamte. Yeah. And I was very much part and parcel of how it was organized, despite the fact that I didn't belong to that political yeah. dispensation. Uh, the year of return, I haven't seen uh, so, so, so if, if I understand, I mean, yeah. it means that all of these uh, events which encouraged returns yes. since independence yes. mean that this one was not particularly novel in that sense. No, not novel at all. But the, the, the thing is that uh, I like the fact that the president put his, his, his all his energies into it and was seen touting mm. the, the event. So he stumped uh, his authority. Yes. I mean, but you it, think that shouldn't be all it takes? No. I mean, there are a lot of things that we could have done. I mean, I'm not, I'm not disparaging the efforts that have been made, but I thought it should be more thorough and it should have gone right down to the ground because, 
you're expecting visitors. You know, right now we're getting reports of uh, the, the badly behaved Ghanaians yeah. in hotels and restaurants and things like that because we didn't do this. As Indiscriminately as raising right. prices and all right. that. Right. I mean, that, that happens. I mean, if you go to Ethiopia right now and there's going to be a, um, a head of state conference, the state actually in, in, insists that uh, hoteliers should put, put their prices up yeah. and the difference goes to yeah. the state yeah. to cover the expenses. All right, fine, understandable. And people will always take advantage of a situation like that. If you go to Geneva, um, during the time of international conferences, mm -hmm. the, the prices are prohibitive. Yeah. So I would not complain too much about, about that. that. But mm -hmm. the thing is that if you're going to charge people, then you've got to give them the services mm -hmm. that they, they've paid for. Okay, um, And so that is it. But the thing is, what bothered me about the year of return was that there were a lot of people who were savvy with this kind of uh, event and they were left out. You were left out, planning, you know, like yourself. Well, I'm not, you know, I don't want to. Uh, that's not what I'm, I'm mm -hmm. talking about. There's people, uh, people like Oyoyanka, my Gizo, you understand, who worked very, very hard. There are people in the cultural scene, um, Ernesta Bikwe, King Ampao. All these people could have been brought on board. So why right? were they not brought on board? Because, you answer because that. I can't. I mean, uh, that that's the policy from the government and things like that. But I, I felt that it wasn't a, a holistic thing. We didn't bring the whole family on board. Mm -hmm. People are coming to Ghana. They don't care whether you are MPP or NDC. Or NDC or CPP. You are a Ghanaian, and mm -hmm. they want yes, a CPP, and they want to talk to you, and they want to engage you. And if you're very good at hosting and all that. You should be allowed. I mean, you know, um, uh, and you could see that the, the, the interaction between the, the, the uh, let's say, the pop culture was limited to a certain group of people. Yeah. All right. I remember 1957 when Louis Armstrong came here. You understand. He dealt with a certain group of people yeah. and all that. It was all, all open. So in, really there was a, in reality, there was a lot to be done. Now... The president has asked for another initiative called Beyond the Year of Return. And I think that we should work a little bit harder. You to should go back to the drawing board. Not necessarily, because there have been great successes. I mean, the fact that we're being touted all over the world as a place to come to and all that. And I've seen on the social media certain people, you know, talking about yeah. how they love Ghana yeah. and all that. Because when you come to Ghana, we have a certain energy. Yeah. We're very hospitable people. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're good people, but and we're despite hard being poor, yeah, poor, yeah, yeah. We, are, we, are, we are open and we smile. You can offer a smile here and that's there. Right. I mean, even that's in right. traffic when the heat is bearing up on everyone, that's you get people true. who are even begging you for money, smiling at yeah. you. Yeah. So basically, I think that we should have we should have done a little bit more, mm -hmm. and I think that um, we should widen the net. So let's look uh, at widening the net and yeah. use that uh, beyond the return as, as, as a focus. Yeah. What would you uh, suggest to I, begin I, the process of widening? Uh, I think the, that the, the, the relevant ministries should come in. The Ministry of Sanitation should come in. Um, roads and highways should come in. Um, there was this incident of the uh, uh, Amaru highway robbery mm -hmm. on the road, the main artery mm -hmm. to our tourism hub. All right, where 100 cars were supposed to have been, you know, uh, ransacked or something. Uh, I've, I've not heard anything yeah. beyond that. But security is a very important thing. You Beef don't want people to come and feel, uh, and feel uh, yeah, unsafe, you understand. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing where we should bring everybody on board, mm -hmm. sit down and do it. Because it shouldn't be a political thing. And it shouldn't be something that you're going to raise political capital out yeah. of. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It should be the fact that Ghana, it's about Ghana, yeah. you know, and Ghana first. And when it's Ghana first, then Ghanaians too, all of them have to be on board. So that really is uh, is where, what I'm, where I'm coming should, from. Yeah. What should go into But the initiative was a good one. The initiative, good one. Let's look yeah. at the numbers. I know that there being all sorts of claims and counterclaims yeah. about tourism receipts peaking yeah. at 1.9 uh, billion. I mean, you cannot answer to the authenticity of that. But typically, I want to understand how these numbers are put together. That is the problem in Ghana, especially when it comes to statistics, because we have a problem uh, with independent assessments. Mm -hmm. All right. It's supposed to be the government statistician who's supposed to be coming out with the figures. All right. But does he have the means of collating that kind of data? You understand? We have to have the right kind of database. Because if you fool yourself and say that was what happened and it didn't happen, then you're creating a situation for yourself. All right. Because when the receipts are, you're saying 9 billion, where's it going to go? Where's yeah. it gone? Yeah. All right. Who got it? You understand? Did it drip down to the, the man on the street who is the most important person at the moment in terms of the political milieu? 
So all these things are very, very important, you see. And, and, and so when it comes to data, all right, I saw that I will doubt. Mm -hmm. But what are the, in, where are the independent assessors? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You need an independent assessment. And sometimes, even if you are a political party and you don't want people to know the truth, all right, you have to get the truth. You should know the truth, yeah. all right? And if you want to embellish it, fine. By so that then yeah. you can work out your do I, get a sense that yeah. you, do I get a sense that you think that these figures were embellished? I mean, yeah. I'm looking at the, the, the numbers for 2018 and yeah. look comparing to 2019. It does suggest that the increase was uh, significantly very shy of uh, just about 30,000 or so. I, but I, I, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't, I wouldn't the, venture. Um, I wouldn't venture out of honesty. Mm, There's yeah. no way I could. And you don't have you know, the, yes, the data. Yes, yeah. And I don't yeah. believe in conjecture That's true. when we're talking about these kinds of things. Fair. Yes. Mm, mm, but yeah. so, so it does appear that uh, all, all, all morning, all afternoon, what you've been telling us is yeah. that we need to find out the proper way of collating this type of information and using it uh, well in order yes. to enhance In 1994, I had the opportunity when I was doing my programs in Sierra Leone to go to Trinidad. And Trinidad is a very small island, mm -hmm. and they get in about a million or 1.5 million people coming for the, the carnival, mm -hmm. all right. And I saw the way they organized themselves. You know, I, I, my friend at the time was the Minister of Tourism. I, I knew him from my days in England, and I went to him, and I said, look, Wendell, um, uh, I've come to do a film, and, I, and he said, you don't need to come to see me. Mm -hmm. Go to the Carnival Commission headquarters, mm -hmm. and they'll look after you. And within, I went there, and within an hour or two hours, I'd give, been given everything. You I were impressed. I was very, very impressed. And you couldn't have received anything of such a, that kind of no. magnitude of yeah. assistance Look, in Ghana. This is a country where you have people who speak even Czech. Yeah. They speak Russian and German. Yeah. All those people could have been brought on board. Yeah. You know, you bring them on board, and people yeah. will feel at home when they realize yeah. that I've come from Brazil, and I've met somebody mm -hmm. who speaks Portuguese. Mm -hmm and can tell me where to go and all that kind of thing. And then we had to have enough publications mm -hmm. about uh, publications and documentation that people could relate to so that it would reinforce their, the decision that they came to the right place. Mm -hmm. Castles and forts, where are the books? Uh, where are the pictures? You know, uh, artists, where are the galleries? All right, where, when you go to uh, Bolga, are you going to you can get baskets and you can yeah. get nice hats? And, and that kind of thing. You go to um, uh, the northern region and you can get your smocks, you know, uh, that kind of thing. These things should be part and parcel of the process of bringing people in. But based on the fact that when people come here, they'll see that Accra has been cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Because Accra, Kumasi, all the ma ma major metropolises have been cleaned up. And people are aware that they've got a responsibilities because we've got a dom coming, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. You see, that, that, is, that is the essence of, of this whole thing, mm. you know. Otherwise, it will be looking like a year of return, a cry edition. And, yes. Uh, we'll not be looking beyond the capital city to do anything. Right. Yes. So I have on hot issues, Honorable uh, Francis Balfour, former a member of parliament for Ablikuma South, very well versed in tourism issues. And we're discussing the year of return, the gains, and how we could learn lessons from previous events of this nature and make it better for Ghana. We'll be right back. Please stay. Welcome back to Hot Issues. We've been joined by uh, Director of the Diaspora Affairs at the Office of the President, Akwesi Iwa Ababio. Uh, it's great to have you. Thank nice. you very much Thank for you. coming at short notice. But great Honorable Fils Bafo, I interrupted you. You yes. were uh, saying that the PR campaign was badly uh, done and we could have done better. Yes. I'm, uh, you know I'm a communication specialist, so I know what I'm talking about. Um, I think that it should have gone really down to every single person. If you look at the old pic films of uh, independence um, uh, um, celebrations, you find out that everybody was involved, involved in it. Um, and and that, that's where I'm coming from, that mm. we should have gone a little bit down, mm. should have went deeper. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Uh, you just joined us. I was grateful you came. But Thank you. Year of Return, we've been assessing the whole impact of the Year of Return. There have been claims and counterclaims of the receipts, 1.9 <laughs> billion, and the numbers and all yeah. of that. Uh, there, there are questions of whether we have credible and relevant data to be able to get the actual numbers. But that aside, I want to find from you what your assessment of the whole Year of Return, which climax in December, is. Um, thank you. Um, again, let me start off by apologizing for coming in late. 
I think uh, I was responding to some emergencies. So I've had to come here without my driver. So, um, but I'm here. So Thank thanks. Um, yes, my own assessment, my own view of this whole event, and you know where we've come to, where we began from, is one of um, overwhelming in itself. That uh, when we started, we were not looking to have that much impact. We were not looking to draw in that many number of people. You were not looking? It means no, no, you were no, not planning? No, no, not that we were not mm. planning, but the numbers mm. in terms of, we, of course we told we would get, of, if you look at the estimates, we started off with about 500,000, yeah. and then here we are hitting the million mark and then we're that sort of thing. So in that respect, that was, you know, kind of the, where we were looking like at. Like kind of rush through? But the whole thing, it's fair to say that people should understand that this is not something that has gone, become a national paper that has been adopted, white paper, cabinet, you know, come out like this. It is a bottom-up approach. So it is what the Diaspora Affairs was doing, what the tourism was doing in normal daily business life that has been crystallized, that has been encapsulated into this year of return. Mm. So in that respect, it has not... So the person just gave an accent to something. Exactly. That, so at uh, some point, we, we, we really felt improved. that, look, we are doing something. Why don't we get our president to, you know, fly the flag for us? You know, do the, this thing for us. So you think, Remember, it, was, the you think first, it was successful? The first, the first um, uh, lunch yeah. of the year of return was done by myself yeah. at the National Theater. Yeah. Of course, it didn't get that sort of um, publicity that we we're looking for. Give it to the right man. Give it to the president give it to Nanado and it becomes a different thing. So at that point, everything is being done to rise up to meet the, you know, the, the whole uh, golfing thing, the ball, the snowballing. So it, it, it makes sense. Uh, is it fair to suggest that this was all overwhelming because yes, you didn't I think, anticipate I think, I think, the numbers? You possibly, because of that, didn't plan for it and didn't whip along I, everyone? I don't, I don't think there was, uh, we would say there was no plan for it. There were plans I mean, planning. with giving the you know shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. That's very little that you could do. So basically, given the constraints, it is only fair to... Phrase, Buffalo won't believe that it's shoestring budget. No, no, it is a shoestring budget. How much was budget. spent on Look, this? Look, my own view, and at this stage, we are trying to see how you know all the figures would be compiled before one starts banding... Banding our figures, you know, that's fair. Figures here and there. But the f first estimate that what we had presented what me as an event organizer, I did a homecoming event. Yeah. I know how much, <laughs> you know, I was trying to get money from, yeah. not even a single money from government as at this stage, but trying to get sponsorship money from yeah. here and from there. Here. And most of the events have been organized aside. It is the umbrella that we provided, the overarching sort of steering committee, which basically encouraged people to come forward and do things. That is how we have managed to do this. So in that respect, the budget has been very limited. There's been a constraining factor, and we have to, you know, you don't sit down and brood over what you can do with a big budget. You try and manage what the little you have, and that's what we've done. See how much we can do it. These celebrities endorsement that we have been able to get, we haven't put in that much to say, hey, you, come here, Beyonce, oh, you, that sort of thing. People have come in at their own, you know, own will. Yeah. So they, what's, they've been what's, attracted what's, what's by the, what's the message. The, what's the plan beyond the return? Of course, that is what we, the beyond is going to yeah. be coming out. Where the full details is going to be unraveled yeah. sooner yeah. for people to know where we'll be going. I guess now that, like Buffalo is saying, we've been through this. Even though, yes, the previous examples were there for us to have also as known as, as a guide. Of course, this being a recent thing, mm. you know, that is certainly going to inform how everything is going to happen. Right. Honorable Fris Bafo, uh, when we, we started talking about uh, this uh, year of return seeming to be focusing on only Accra, do you think that a lot could have been done to give it more of a national presence by getting all the coaches of involved, course, uh, getting all the various places? If you're going to Bogatanga, you know you're going to get a basket here and there. Yeah, you sure. think uh, we fell short of that? Yes, we did. And, uh, you know, when he was talking about a shoestring budget, I mean, I, I never ever worry about money when it comes to events, mm. especially when you, if you had um, an understanding of the kind of uh, market out there, yeah. all right? You have to anticipate and that. And the, the impact this the could impact. bring. Look, Ghana has always been the black star of Africa. Of Africa. All right, and it was something like a renewal. And I did you know, actually earlier on say, say that it, the yes. president has 
done extremely well great to initiative. throw himself into it and was a great initiative. But the thing is that we all should we also should make sure that when we're doing these kind of things, I mean when you're having a party, all right, and I know we've had parties where you'll have gate crashes coming in, but you have to take that into mm -hmm. consideration, knowing the kind of thing that you've done, all right. Uh, and I, as I, I said, I'm not faulting anybody. I'm yeah. just saying that we have to have a different approach. And yeah. if we looked at the continuity of the various um, diasporan, uh, pro-diasporan events that we, we wanted, we could, have, we could have done it. I mean, we could have helped. I mean, people were there to help. Mm -hmm. And, and you, actually, you don't pay celebrities to come because when you do that, then it, 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 it loses its credibility. Yeah. It's good that they've come on their own, mm -hmm. you understand. But I'm just saying that there is more out there, you know. I mean, we're not looking after our cultural sector as well as we should. And it is not only limited to this government. It's a previous governments too that, you know, it's something that you can take for granted. You can't take it for granted. You can't take it for right. granted. And that is where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not critical of the no. initiative yeah. at all. Yeah. I'm just saying that we could have done far, much, far better. And it's better. not about a budget. It is about the will. Mm -hmm. It is about bringing everybody on board. Mm -hmm. You understand? If you do not bring everybody on board and you narrow it because you're afraid of the budget, then you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Then okay. you're in trouble. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bibio, I, I, I remember I went to Ethiopia and I spent three weeks there and I stayed at Hilton Hotel and there was a young boy who, uh, you know, made the effort every day to meet with me at the entrance to the hotel. I mean, the security discouraged me from engaging with that young boy. But the impression that young boy had of me was how much he knew about Ghana after learning that I came from Ghana. And I was impressed how much he knew about the history of Ethiopia. He became more like my tour guide and took me to places at no cost. And this was a boy enjoying it. And whatever money I gave him for the three weeks period, I did so willingly. We didn't get that kind of excitement from everyone like that with a year of return. Um, I think uh, perhaps uh, that is going to be difficult for me to be able to either, you know, endorse, mm. as you've said. Or say. Say, because say. Because that would not I be a policy not direction. Receiving any, yeah. But seriously speaking, right from the beginning, the tourism industry, the tourism uh, GTA, made the effort we drew in all the tourist uh, guides and all the companies that are involved in tourism to conscientize them to perhaps with hindsight mm -hmm. you know a little bit more or perhaps some more efforts should have gone into it but you know some efforts were made we knew they were the stakeholders mm -hmm. we knew they were the key players we knew they had a role to play and they were all drawn in we had series of you know meetings with them the hoteliers the you know you name them almost everyone was drawn in to 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 really begin with that sort of i spoke uh, with diallo diallo the member yeah, of the planning so, committee he tells me how you were all over the place exactly seriously we go to meetings and i would always insist on drawing people drawing organizations you know to come on board because shortly before that remember we had done the coming home 2017 and I was, um, you know, key person in that um, year of return. I mean, you know, the homecoming. Mm -hmm. So we, there was a lot to draw on, as a lot of experience, and we knew about how some of these people had to come in. And the private participation was equally important. I mean, Professor Isi Sutherland, Rabbi Cohen, Gedilai, all these people coming in with their expertise, with their knowledge, is something that we, we are proud of. We all know it's not like uh, it has been driven along the party lines of only those who are come on who are now. Because somebody like I mean, AC was, you know, the previous, what he called, appointee of PNDC. She, there she was, a key person who was, you know, vital to us in moving forward and, you know, doing all the things that we did. So, yes, with hindsight, we would always be in a position to see how best we could have you know, yeah. done it, how best we could have shaped it, how we could have embraced as many as possible. But then, it gets to a point where, you know, you need to move on quickly you with what you quickly. have to be able to deliver some of the things. I wish we had a time it, for people us. People do not realize that, yes, I do, I mean, share that concern, for instance, that we didn't spread things across the country so much. That was one thing that was always worrying me. I mean, I'm a Kumasi boy. I wanted as much to be done as Kumasi. So, for instance, when there was that Kumasi carnival, I was right in there. But people forget that the independence anniversary which we took to Tamale, was part of the year of return. The whole country moving to Tamale and getting involved. For the first time, the people that marched past 
had a delegation from the diaspora. You know, they had a placard and everything. Diaspora also marching by. So every old thing was even repackaged, was being, you know, sort of rebottled as you know so the year of return i, I wish we could have a respect. long time we, but we've I, had I'm that opportunity our time is but right. rather badly mm. to spread it out mm. but certainly any next thing that has to be done has to be countrywide. Mm. I, I want uh, to touch uh, briefly on uh, claims that the numbers were exaggerated. I mean, embellished more like. I mean, $1.9 billion uh, as gains from these receipts and the numbers coming in. What would you say about those? I, I, think, I think it's too early to be arguing mm. about these numbers, mm. seriously speaking. The, the numbers that you get, even for those who have come immigration service, it doesn't take them immediately the day or the yeah, month ends so to no. get that figure. Yeah. It is going to come through quickly. Yeah. But then some rough ballpark figure had to be worked with, yeah. had to be sort of used to uh, give an idea as to where we are going. For instance, it as crude as perhaps even saying that when people are coming in, you ask them, what is how much they are you carrying? Come, how much yeah, do they intend yeah. to spend? They could they under could, declare. They could, I could come with ten thousand and only spend one thousand, yeah. or come mm. with, you know, even borrow and spend more here. So, so it's too early. It is too early. I think fair. yes. But, but people beyond, should respect beyond the zero that. return, what's next? I think you know it's in the key word beyond the return. We have only started you know this uh, engagement. Um, um, as, a, as a major policy initiative, which was begun by the pre previous government. So there is a diaspora engagement policy that is going to be launched somewhere as early as this, um, mm -hmm. this year. We were working hard to see how it could have been launched, but given that we were all occupied and so busy, but then the president has assured me that, yeah, we should come forward with the document for it to go to cabinet. In the past government, they had also done all that. The researchers who had laid on had all has done, they've done all the work that they need to do. So it's almost about rubber stamping it. The stakeholder engagement has been done. We've traveled and done some road shows in the, you know, not just so outside, it's, it's but gonna, even in the country. But yes, certainly. That on our friends, yeah, uh, we have to wrap up. But I'll take your final word. I mean, looking at what has been achieved, uh, where we're going by the prescription he has given us for beyond the year of return. What are your expectations? I believe that it's a great initiative. And I believe that uh, we should also look back um, at previous um, events and then link them. There should be an element of continuity and that we should try and endeavor to bring on people who are capable, whatever their political stance is. Because, I mean, as I said, Seb Kuo was a conservative, but he was put in charge of the London Olympics when the Labour Party was in power. Well, gentlemen, that's all. Thanks very much uh, for uh, making time to be with us here on Hot Issues. I'm Stephen Enti, and that's how we wrap up. Thanks for your time.